This module focuses on the fundamental concepts of analog telephony. We'll look at the basic model of connecting a call and then distinguish between phones and phone lines. From there, we'll look at the various signaling methods used in analog telephony environments. In the next module, we'll see how to configure DOTI analog interface cards to connect asterisk to analog phones and phone lines. Modeled here is a typical analog circuit between a residence and a telephone company's local central office. A pair of twisted copper wires runs between a line card and a switch at the telephone company and the customer premise. This two-wire circuit is called the local loop. The customer plugs a compatible phone into an RJ11 wall jack that is connected to the local loop. When the phone's receiver is lifted, the circuit of the loop is completed. The switch at the telephone company detects this and immediately generates dial tone. The electrical current powering the circuit is provided by the telco switch. In an office environment, there is often a PBX that acts as a small switch on the premises. Such a PBX typically connects to one or more incoming lines, as well as a number of internal phones. Most PBXs can also offer additional call services, such as voicemail and conferencing. In this model, analog phones do not connect directly to the local loop. The phone lines are connected to the PBX, which bridges the circuits between a phone and the phone line when the call is made. With the help of DOTI interface cards, Asterisk is capable of exactly this type of setup. Each connected analog circuit is treated as a single port on the interface card. So in the simple example where one phone connects through the PBX to one phone line, two ports are actually necessary. As we'll see in the next slide, there are different types of analog ports as well. There are two different types of analog ports, based on the function and behavior of the circuit. Remember that the switch equipment at the telephone company powers the circuit by providing voltage on the line. The phone side of the circuit must not provide its own voltage to the line, or the line card in the telco switch is likely to be damaged. In order for asterisk to connect to a phone line provided by the telco, it must behave like a phone and not provide voltage. In order for asterisk to let analog phones connect to itself, it must behave like the telco and provide voltage and dial tone on the circuit. So we have two different types of ports. An FXO, or Foreign Exchange Office port, receives dial tone, connects to the office, and talks like a station or phone. An FXS, or Foreign Exchange Station port, provides dial tone, connects to a station or phone, and talks like the central office. We say that an FXO port uses FXS signaling because it talks like a station, and an FXS port uses FXO signaling because it talks like an office. It's easy to get this backwards, so just try to remember that each port type uses the opposite signaling. Note that both types of ports provide bidirectional communication. Let's take a look at the model again, this time labeling the ports appropriately. Don't worry about the asterisk configuration for now, we'll get to that soon. We'll follow the path of a call, beginning with someone on the premise taking a phone receiver off hook. When the phone goes off hook, the PBX needs to behave like a central office and present dial tone. An FXS module does this, so we can label this port FXS. We'll assume the PBX is set up to dial out this analog line connected to the telco. We know that the telco provides dial tone, so the port connected to the line must behave like a station. It's an FXO port. When Asterisk takes the FXO port off hook, the telco knows that we want to place a call and it provides dial tone. Asterisk provides the digits it already received from the analog phone and bridges the FXS and FXO ports together. The bridge will persist until the call is hung up or transferred. Each analog port is its own channel in Asterisk. So just like with SIP phones calling each other through Asterisk, there is more than one active channel involved in the setup of a complete end-to-end -end call. So far, we've looked at the physical connections that make up an analog circuit as well as the different port types. We also need to discuss the electrical signaling used for the actions such as requesting dial tone and indicating when a call has been hung up. Asterisk recognizes three types of analog signaling. The least common is ground start, where dial tone is requested by briefly grounding one of the leads. Much more common is the loop start signaling method, where dial tone is requested by completing a circuit so that there is a current loop through the phone. The third type of signaling, called cool start, is loop start with the added feature of disconnect supervision. 
The far end of the circuit can signal a disconnect by temporarily breaking the current loop. This allows applications such as voicemail to be automatically hung up when the remote party ends the call instead of keeping the circuit connected indefinitely. In practice, Cool Start is a signaling method of choice in Asterisk because it is highly compatible with Loop Start, but also provides additional benefit on some circuits. In this module, we have reviewed the fundamentals of analog telephony, including the basic terminology necessary to understand how it works. We also introduced the two types of analog ports, FXO lines and FXS stations. We wrapped up with a survey of analog signaling methods still in use today that Astra supports. Move on now to the next module to see how analog DOTI interfaces can be set up to connect asterisk to analog lines and phones.